Now take a moment and chill with Primo. US video game developers may have their mood boards, their foosball tables and their beach volleyball courts and it's safe to say Kiwi game developers don't. That said, our boys don't need any of that sort of carry on. They got all the inspiration they need from this. We're in Titarangi on Auckland's west coast to talk to Grinding Gear Games about the New Zealand game industry and their upcoming title, Path of Exile. My thanks to you. There'll be a few less hungry mouths around the campfire tonight. But really, taking a few empty cutthroat heads? Where's the challenge in that? Path of Exile will be completely free to download and play. Players will be able to connect, cooperate and compete with others in a dark fantasy world. Grinding Gear co-founder Chris Wilson explains. So basically the player plays a character who's been exiled from their homeland. They've committed a crime, which varies depending on their character class, and have been exiled to the world of Rykelast, which is a very hostile, forbidding continent. The Everything, ranging from the monsters to the environment to other players, are out to get them here, and they have to forge their way in this world. But we stress, it isn't about the player saving the world. In this case, they're trying to save themselves, and to gain tools that allow them to survive against the wilderness. So it's not someone's quest to make the world a better place, it's merely a quest to become as powerful as possible. Video games are an emerging industry in New Zealand. Unlike developers in other countries, even promising Kiwi studios like Grinding Gear need only look back a few years to recall their humble origins. Myself and the other two founders, Eric and Jonathan, got together in very late 2006 and decided that we were great fans of the action RPG genre, we'd enjoyed titles such as Diablo, Titan Quest, Dungeon Siege, and we wanted to make a game of our own that was in this genre. We were working from my garage in West Auckland, but we've moved to an office as the team got larger. We started with just the three of us, and over the years we've expanded our team. At the moment we have 12 full-time people and a bunch of contractors. Like many people working in or around video games, becoming involved in the industry is often vocational. Chris explains. Jonathan and I were programmers and Eric was an artist. He lived in Sweden but came across for the project. And Jonathan and I didn't like the idea of working in the mundane software industry, so we decided we'd rather you know, forge out on our own and start a game project. The film industry is now well established in New Zealand, and video games present an opportunity every bit as promising. Even so, funding can be difficult to source. For Grinding Gear, investment has had to be sought privately. We're lucky to have rich friends, so they've been willing to invest some money in the project to see it to fruition. It's very difficult to get venture capitalists or angel investors interested, especially in online games. There's a mixture of fear and misunderstanding in the industry. And as with any burgeoning industry, finding experienced staff can be very difficult. Because of the lack of New Zealand game industry historically, we've basically had to find talented hobbyists, people who haven't proved their mettle on a published game title. Although where we can, if people have prior experience, that's definitely a bonus. So we've overcome this basically by just crafting the ideal team over several years. Of course, the drawback here is it makes it hard to expand rapidly. If we have to double the size of our development team in six months because we have an expansion to make, for example, it'll be very difficult to do that without pulling in overseas contractors who would be very expensive. But being based in New Zealand does have some advantages. Well, it's great to be able to develop in an English-speaking Western country where people don't command the insane salary requirements of, for example, the Bay Area in the States. It's an extremely exciting time for those looking to break into the industry, says Chris. I'd say go for it. The, it's a really exciting time at the moment for game development in New Zealand. The media design schools put together a really good course on game development and that's getting a lot more intake each year. In addition, there are lots of international um, there's lots of international interest in the New Zealand games industry. For example, Gameloft, who a, a large iOS developer, have recently opened an office in Auckland, and that's going, that's going really well for them. So the industry is growing by a large amount each year. There's a lot of jobs available in it, so I strongly encourage people to join the industry if they're interested. You think your dark magic will help you, witch? Greater than you have tried. Captains wreck their ships at the siren's call. Their ghosts are just some of her minions. Even if you reach her lair, she'll twist your senses and poison your mind. There's also a lot to be said for the old maxim, just start. 
Chris recommends aspiring developers should get in front of a computer and try their hand. The best advice would probably be to work on as many hobby game projects as they can. I'm talking mods or small things they can put together, you know, join a team on the internet and make something. When we're looking to hire people, for example, and I, this, probably, this probably factors into a lot of other decisions that other companies make, they're looking for experience in game development. Now, for someone who hasn't worked in the actual industry in New Zealand, the only way someone can get this experience is working by themselves on a project. It, it's less relevant to get a computer science qualification, for example, than it was in the past in order to get into this industry. So how does a free online game earn back its development costs? Path of Exile is completely free to download and play. We're going to be monetizing it through a series of what we call ethical microtransactions. So basically, the player is able to augment their character in a number of visual ways by buying perks for their account. An example is, if someone normally casts fireballs in the game, and everyone's used to seeing those fireballs, this person can have a different looking fireball, perhaps a dragon's head that flies to the air. And this costs, say, $5, for example. Now, although the dragon's head does exactly the same damage as a normal fireball, the player will really stand out. And when they use it, they'll have their friends and spectators very interested in what it is that they're doing. So we have a series of ethical microtransactions like that. And we've done a lot of industry research on various other games. There's a lot of money to be made through this. It also, many of our competitors offer what they describe as microtransactions that we feel is somewhat unethical. For example, uh, buying an experience potion that doubles the amount of experience you get for a certain time period. Those definitely monetize at a higher rate, but of course you run the risk of scaring away your audience. So we've been very careful to design things that allow us to have as many players as possible. We don't want to put anyone off. It also helps that we can try to offer a fair competitive playing field for PvP, and we feel that people being able to buy an advantage into that would be a problem. Now, do we have a deal, duelist? Or do we have a problem? Grinding Gear anticipates that Path of Exile will go into open beta at the end of this year. It would be great to enter um, public beta, like open beta as it were, at the end of the year. Maybe December, but we don't want to be bound to that. Um, otherwise it will be at the beginning of the following year. We kind of see open beta as release for our project. Um, it's typical for online services to be in beta for a long period of time, but as far as we're concerned, if a large portion of the community has access to the game, then it's essentially out and we have to hold it to those quality standards. We um, have a, a lottery system, as it were, on our website of accounts that have signed up, and we're going to be adding quite a large selection of those. So if you're interested in joining the beta, please do sign up. That was a chill-out track brought to you by Primo.